So, would you tell us your name? Bo Fasold, F-A-S-O-L-D. Real name, Charles. Okay. And when did you attend Susquehanna? I graduated in 1970, so I would have started in the fall of 66, I guess. Mm -hmm. And what did you bring to the harvest today? Well, a little bit of everything. Uh, uh, an old diploma from my grandmother, a poster advertising a, a play that Susquehanna University put on, uh, some two little pins, buttons type, type things, a brochure uh, advertising a boat trip up the Susquehanna River to uh, what's now Ted's Landing for a picnic. Okay. And two football game advertising broadsides, probably from 1919 in that area. You got lots of stuff. Yeah, well, that's what mm -hmm. I found. As I said, I kind of gathered this stuff this, uh, a couple days ago. All right. Um, okay, so why don't we start with the diploma from your grandmother, yeah. and um, how old is it? You said 19... 1893, I believe. Let me check that. That's a photo of her on graduation. You want to hold it up? Sorry. Yeah. You just want to make sure that people can see it. It's a photo of her on graduation day holding the exact diploma that I have here. Was she the only female? Yes, she was. Not, but it turns out in nine, oh, this is 93. I just saw a picture of the class of 91. The class of 91 had maybe three females. So I thought maybe she was unique that she may have been one of the first, but apparently mm -hmm. there were some in other classes. But anyhow, the... When I went through my dad's trunk, her diploma was still folded exactly the way it was there. I don't, I don't know that they ever unfolded it and framed it. Okay. It, it was exactly like, and that was 15 years ago, so I, I had it framed. Could you hold it up like this? I just want to make sure we can It looks it very well preserved. Well, wow. it's probably because it was never, never fiddled with uh, much at all. And now we have diplomas that are like... This long, like yeah, well, I know. No, long. <laughs> these were these were quite uh, intricate. Missionary at the time. Institute. So yeah, Missionary Institute. Now that became Susquehanna University. You have to help me. Nineteen eleven. No, I think it was earlier than that. Yeah, yeah. I it's think so. I I actually thought it was eight, like eighteen ninety five, but I'm not. No, I'm not that, sure. that might be it. Okay. Wait. But anyhow, it has the signatures of Peter Bourne and uh, Professor Dim and. Uh, Woodruff and made out to my grandmother Lulu App. So are you like a legacy? Uh, like your, your grandmother went here? Did your mom go here too? No, but my uh, my my dad, his two sisters, myself and actually her her father went here also. In her father went here in about 18 uh, 59 or something like that. Really? So you're the epitome of a legacy. <laughs> Except, yeah, I have no kids, though, so we kind of end, the, oh, end the transition here. But anyhow, that's what I have. And okay. uh, The apps were important to Susquehanna because the, the land that the university is on is app farmland. Really? Yes. A uh, guy named John App donated farmland for the building of Susquehanna University. And she, that would have been her great uncle, I think, would have been John App. But I think he made a deal that family members would be either given reduced admission or, or allowed to attend here in return for the, uh, the land that was, that was donated. Okay, since, you, since we only have like 10 minutes for each interview, we, and since you have a lot of stuff, you, you should so really let's keep moving. Um, so the poster from the play? Okay, now this is from... 1920. What's the play? And the play is O.O. Oh, oh, Cootie, and it was done by the Varsity S Club. And in 1920, Susquehanna didn't really have a, a place to put on plays. They didn't have a, a, a building large enough for plays, so they used the Masonic Temple in Seelands Grove. The first floor of the Masonic Temple in Seelands Grove was a big auditorium. And 
they, we had movies in the auditorium and, and all what, whatever big events Seals Grove had were held in the Masonic Auditorium, including Susquehanna University plays. So this was the this poster from that. And admission was 55 cents. And on the back, I have just some uh, write-ups on, on the play, live amateur presentation and so forth. Yeah, great. So this was uh, from your grandmother's? No, th or? this, I don't know why I have this. This this was not connected to my grandmother. My grandmother would have graduated, uh, you know, 27 years earlier than this. So oh, right. I, have, I, I don't know how we happen to have this, but... And the articles on the back, where were they published from? Well, they're from the local Seals Grove Times. And I, I came out to the library here and went downstairs to the archives, mm -hmm. to the newspaper archives, and thought if I looked hard enough, I would I would find the, the write-up on this. And fortunately, I, I found several write-ups. So. You did your research. Yeah, that was good. I like doing research. Okay. Okay, let's keep moving. I mean, I really wish we had longer time because this no, is really fine. interesting. We have so many things. Okay, now here we have two interesting. These are real. These were these are called broadsides. These were advertising posters that were done for Susquehanna University football games. And this one is from 1918. And SATC, this is, this is in World War I era, SATC is Student Army Training Corps. We had a lot of pre-military fellows going to campus here and they, mm -hmm. they played uh, Lebanon Valley College, their, their version also. So that was uh, at Edgewood, Edgewood Park is in Shemokin. So this, this game would have been in Shemokin. But anyhow, this was 1918. Is this also like a, you don't know where this came from? I don't know where this came from, nope. Okay, that's 1918. And then in 1919, the, the war was over, so we're back to Susquehanna University, and they played Mount Carmel. Now, Mount Carmel was not the high school, but they, they had like a, uh, an athletic club in Mount Carmel. You know, you're playing with Mount Carmel over in, okay. okay. Anyhow, they, they played Mount Carmel, and the game was in Seals Grove at Warner Field. Warner Field is the old name for it the field you have now. It's now uh, what Stag Field, I believe. So, admission 50 cents. Right, so I know you don't know like how exactly you, you these were kept, mm -hmm. but do you know where you found them? I purchased them from somebody who had them in their collection. Oh, so you're a collector then? Uh, sort of. It's sort of. Like amateur yes. collector. Amateur collector is what I would call it. I'm not a not a, a you know a retailer or anything like that. I just I, I like things of, of local interest, and this is I thought of nice local interest. So mm -hmm. I have that, and then this is going to be a little hard to see. This is from 1882. Can you focus on that? You can just move it up. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we can see a little bit, yeah. And this is an advertisement from 1882 of a picnic that was held up on Blue Hill. And Blue Hill is where Ted's Landing had been, the, the restaurant. Do you two know where I mean? Yeah. Um, At, right down. Right on your way to Sunbury. When mm -hmm. you, right right before the bridge, there, there's yeah. no where uh, Skeeter's is now. Oh, yep. This would have been where okay. Skeeter's was. There was a park there. It was called Clement Park. Anyhow, th this was a picnic, and they were going to ride by boat. They were going to go down to the Isle of Kew on the Susquehanna River and take a boat up, up the river and get off and go to the, the picnic grounds. You are uh, invited to attend a picnic on Saturday, May 27, 1882. We will leave at the wharf at Seals River at 7 o'clock a.m. We'd be pleased to have your company on the above occasion. And these are for student, the student annual picnic for Susquehanna. I, that would have been for the Missionary Institute at that time. What year was it again? 1882. 1882. So that must have been, uh, you'd still know where it came from? No, I don't know where that came <laughs> from. I probably acquired that somewhere. And here's something neat. This is a, a pin. A cel these are called celluloid pins, I believe. This is a pin of one of SU's basketball teams, okay, mm -hmm. and I found the exact photograph on, I think out of one of the SU yearbooks by looking at the yearbooks, and that was the 1913 basketball team, it's the same picture, 
but the uh, image was was put onto a actually it's a mirror I, I think in in its better days that was a, a mirror on the back end you know something that maybe a lady would keep in their in their purse or whatever okay and then the last thing I this is from my dad in 1936 that's when he graduated and this is a I'd call it a commencement program from 1936 with very nice cover. If you feel the cover on that, it's quite. It's wow. like a, it's like a, a, a leather maybe, mm -hmm. and it has a very fancy inside a picture of the one of the buildings on campus, and then the events that are going to go along with graduation. The senior class and the the times and then it's going to give you a list of the senior students for wow. the class of 1936. It's certainly a lot more fancy than uh, our paper. Oh yeah I mean this is quite nice mm -hmm. and uh, I assume every every student got one of those at the time. That they so did this that? belong to your father? This belonged to my so dad. So is yeah. his name in there? Yeah yes it would be. What year is it? 36. 1936. Yeah, he was Charles Leonard Fassold, and he's okay. he's in here along with I don't know. It looks like maybe 50 some people that were in the class of 36. All right, and that's and that's what you have. Well, I have one more thing which I don't think has a lot of great relevance. This is a a pin uh, for a. A get together at the Phi Mu Delta fraternity, and you won't know the Phi Mu Delta fraternity because it, it's the empty. When you go down toward the post office, when you go down the street toward the post office, there's an empty lot on your left that the kids play a lot of games and have picnics on. And it's, it's where we have the beer festival, and it's where there's a big tent right now for uh, homecoming. Okay. Uh, there was a giant, you see the fraternity house that was there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there was a big fraternity house there, and it fell in disrepair. It burned partially a couple times and was finally torn down because it was an eyesore. But it, it's a shame. It's gone now. But anyhow, this, uh, in its heyday, and this, this was 1926, I believe it is. So um, what is the ribbon actually for, though? Well... It says the 12th Annual Conclave, Phi Mu Delta Fraternity with Mu Alpha Chapter, Seelands Grove, PA, December 27, 1926. I would guess it's a convention of uh, fraternity members, maybe, maybe past fraternity members or fraternity members from other, other colleges getting together at Susquehanna. That's just a guess on that, though. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> I do too. It's interesting because the new house up that way yeah. looks similar. And that to is that. a that is Phi Mu also, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they probably tried to build it. You know, this is kind of a Tudor style there. I think they yeah. probably tried to build it in the same style. This this apparently was a real eye attracting building, building. when it when it was built in Seelinger. Seelinger didn't yeah, have many great buildings like that. I get like a close up of oh, the sure. house. Oh sure. And that is. Of Phi Mu Delta. Yeah. Okay. Former Phi Mu Delta house. Right. Well, it's been our, really our pleasure. I think we can take like another 10 minutes just to talk about uh, like other things, more about the items and more about your experiences. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we have like, a lot of people outside. Also, no, no, I understand. I'm glad you do. How did you hear about the History Harvest? Uh, Ryan, is it Ryan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ryan. Ryan, I'm, I do another thing of interest. I, I collect. Seelands Grove related photographs and I, I have them on a, on a Flickr file and it's a history of Seelands Grove from 1864 all the way up to current times and it's photos of, of Seelands Grove with, with captions explaining what you're looking at and Ryan wants to incorporate that into, into out here at Susquehanna so he and I have been working on that and then he told me about the history harvest. Mm -hmm.